We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Hi, buddies. Welcome back to my channel. It's a baby girl again, Oshne Adela. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. On today's video, I want to teach you guys how to make structured designs on your styles, any style of your choice, a quality structured design. <laughs> First of all, I'll be introducing you to the crinoline, the flexible crinoline. It's part of the equipment you need. Very, very important. I need 30 inches and 24 inches, but I'll be going with the 30 inches first as practical. You can use any inches of your choice. You do not have to use 30 inches depending on how bogus and long and wide you want your own to be. So for me, I'll be going with 30 inches and 24 inches and I'll be cutting my crinoline in three places in 30 inches. So my 30 inches, I will have three crinoline and my 24 inches, I will have three crinoline. That's six. So that's one, two, three. And I already attached them together. After cutting your crinoline, you just take it to the machine and join them together. You just sew on the crinoline. After that, I'm introducing you to the polyester boning. Please be sure of the polyester boning you're buying in size and thickness. It has to be very thick. Then you measure your polyester one inch away from the edge of the 30 inches screen line that you've seen already. So it's either one inch or half inch away. You just have to be careful. The reason is for it not to poke you or the clients that will be wearing the fabric. You just have to pay attention to the cutting. After that, I already trimmed out my two polyester boning. Then you have to press it, make it like a ruler, like a straight form. Make it very straight and firm enough. You shouldn't put your iron on the polyester directly. So I would definitely advise you lay clothes on the polyester before pressing it. This particular part can be a bit challenging, but you need to just take your time and press it. Make sure it is firm, make sure it is long and straight and, you know, well organized, basically. I know you can now see the difference between both of them, so you just have to do like a replica of the other. Now we are done with this face okay so the next stage we are doing now is taking your crinoline that you've sewn already then passing through your polyester boning inside it as you can see polyester boning is actually not pronounced polyester it is polyester but i can actually remember like my teacher then he always said polyester polyester and you know back then we always find it difficult to actually like correct them but it's actually called polyester not polyester okay so after passing the polyester you can see the difference there's like an inch or half inch away from the actual crinoline so you attach the other one you can also find difficulties whereby you know after pressing your polyester bone in it might be longer than the other due to the stretchness so you can still trim and also burn like burn it a little bit just to be firm now this part is just for you to sew the polyester in different segments let them be in different segments and you know it shouldn't move it shouldn't move away from their segments so that is why i decided to like stitch them as you can see after stitching them in their separate segments you can see they don't clash together they are both separate they don't move away from their houses and you can see how flexible and hard so this part is just for you to tape the rough part of the crinoline like i said so it doesn't scratch or arm you or your clients that will be wearing the clothes so just try and tape it round and make it well organized so it doesn't poke any of your clients or you. You can use paper tape, you can use cello tape, you can just anything that is sticky.
With this step, you won't have anything like crinoline coming out of your fabric or anything pokey. You won't have it at all. Now I'm introducing you to the clothing segment. You need to clothe your crinoline. You need to cover it. So this is the fabric I'll be using. The actual measurement should be 30, but you need to add 2 inches for the closing allowance. Do you understand? So the actual crinoline measurement is 30, then the 2 inches allowance is just to cover it. There are actually different sizes of crinoline. The actual size I used is 4 inches. So when you are creating your clothing, you need to add the 4 inches, then also 1 inch allowance to close in the crinoline inside the fabric. Now, if your fabric is a very light fabric, I would advise you to use Estee to hold the fabric very firm. Make it like very strong, like as if you are using a thick fabric. This part is actually an optional part. You do not have to use the Ashebi fabric. You can make your structure plain. You can, you know, beautify it with beadings on it. It's not very important. But for me, due to the style I've chosen and due to the style my client had chosen, I will have to actually use the fabric, the Ashebi fabric that I've used for the style. We all know that Ashebi fabrics are very light and for it to stay glued to the fabric that you'll be using, you just have to use your hemming gum to hold it together and make it stand strong. When I stand strong... Before you put the crinoline into the fabric, you need to take it to your machine and stitch. As you can see, I'm trying to like trim out every beading that is on the Ashebi so it doesn't break my needle. Do you understand? So just take your time and stitch. Like I said earlier, the one inch I left from the four inches, so that is what I'm stitching out of it now. After that, all you have to do is just to turn the fabric to the right side. If you actually have the turning tweezer, you can actually use it. You do not have to go through this long process that I just did. It's so, so stressful. Please, this part is very, very important. You need to understand that this, the part you've stitched has to be at the center of the fabric. It shouldn't be by the side. It should be at the center, then you press it. It should be at the center, as you can see. It shouldn't be by the side of the fabric. It can actually disorganize your style. It can disorganize your structure. Then you press it. After that segment, you can now pass through your crinoline, your fixed crinoline. Now you're getting the structure that we want. You get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. <laughs> You can see this part. You can remember I told you to add 2 inches. So this is the aim of the 2 inches. It's just for the coverage. As you can see, you fold in after the attachment or after the fixing of the crinoline into the fabric. You fold in the allowance inside. Then you stitch on it. You fold it inside as you can see. Then you stitch on it. And this is the final look of our structure. We have two structures, so you can actually design it in your own way, in your own actual design. You can be creative with it, you can do it in different styles of your choice. As you can see, I'm just trying to actually like be creative basically. So you can just do whatever you want to do with it. And this is the final look. Trust me, this structure is very good, is very, very nice. And and it doesn't move it's very strong it doesn't move away thank you so much guys for watching my channel please don't forget to like share subscribe 
and you know turn on your notification button and your baby girl got you forever okay i am here for you guys you can also watch my other videos if you don't mind but i hope you mind you should also see some of my other videos so this is the final look this is what i wanted this is the style thank you thank you thank you for watching i love you buddies bye